Hello folks and welcome to another Legend Skill Review. In this video we're going to be looking at a figure I have been really looking forward to. Iron Factory IFEX53 Oni Vajra aka Lockdown. Now if you're familiar with Iron Factory it won't come as a surprise to you that this figure is partially based on the IDW version of Lockdown. But they have taken a fair bit of creative liberty with the design. For one, he is part of the Iron Samurai subline, so there are some extra elements like the uh, segmented armor skirt there and the katana to tie in there. Uh, but also, he is absolutely bristling with these spikes. Now, Lockdown has always been a spiky character, but they really went all out here. Uh, he's got them all over, and they are not just for show. Uh, my fingers have been sliced up genuinely uh, in the process of handling him for the transformation and such. But yeah, they're no joke. Um, Iron Factory is quite clearly not bound by the same safety regulations that apply to Hasbro. Uh, this is probably enough, obvious enough for like, third party legends. I don't know if anyone buys them for their kids, but it's particularly in this case. Do not give this to a child. It is a hazard. Safety concerns aside, it is a very nice sculpt. That ribcage chest plate and those uh, Oni skulls on his hips there give him kind of a skeleton motif. And just look at that absolutely gorgeous head sculpt. Very similar to the uh, IDW version. Of course, he wouldn't be locked down without a titanic neck like that. Now, there is an... Um, Elephants in the room I have yet to address. What on earth are those proportions? The man is over 60% leg. Now, to be fair, that's not terribly far off from his original animated toy. Has some funky proportions there as well. The legs make up about 58% of the height of this figure, and this figure they make up about 64%. So they're not too far off from each other, but... For context, uh, the average human, I think, their legs make up somewhere between 50 and 55% of their height. So it looks really weird. Now, it's not just the length of the legs that is the issue. Lockdown has a thigh gap wider than its own shoulders. It's hilarious because this armoured skirt loincloth piece, it's not actually protecting anything. But yeah, you can position the legs closer together. So it looks better from the front. But uh, in terms of the side profile, uh, no comment. But yeah, you have plenty of options with the skirt as well. The entire assembly can pop off. Um, and then, as you saw there, the loincloth piece can detach. And the skulls are on ball joints. They can also pop out. But honestly, I've tried a couple of different configurations and nothing really improves the look of this. I think the issue comes from they've tried to use a very similar transformation to that animated toy uh, with the way the legs form the sides of the alt mode and due to the way the alt mode's proportions have worked out that's left the robot mode to suffer quite a bit but yeah it's something you, you might like how quirky this looks a lot of people don't myself kind of included in terms of paint, he hasn't got an awful lot of it. He's got those green and red highlights, as well as a wee bit of silver in certain areas. But yeah, he's mostly just this unpainted metallic black plastic with some gunmetal grey as well. As for articulation, he has a ball joint at the top of the neck, and then one at the base of the neck as well. Hinge, a butterfly hinges in the shoulders, as well as the usual ball joints. The shoulder pauldrons are each on a hinge and a ball joint themselves, so you can adjust those to your liking. Biceps rotate, double elbow hinge. Have a hinge in the wrist itself there. More for the transformation, but you can use it for uh, robot mode poses. And then the wrist itself is on a ball joint. He has a ball joint 
in the middle of his torso there, as well as a second waist joint further down, which is uh, open at the back for those good old limbo poses. But yeah, you can get some nice natural looking waist twists. The thigh guard skull pieces are on ball joints, so they can move with the legs. Hips themselves are able to hinge backwards. Again, more for the transformation, but can be useful for some poses. And they have the uh, usual ball joint. Plenty of room for the splits. Loincloth piece, it's not a hinge. Can't really go forwards, but can't go all the way back. The thigh rotation, nice deep double knee bend. And the ankle is on a hinge and a ball joint with an absolute ton of range. And last but not least, his toes have a hinge. Can be useful for some poses. As far as accessories go, Lockdown has quite a few. He of course has the standard four pairs of hands that Iron Factory's got in the habit of doing. We've got the uh, closed fists, the gripping hands, angle gripping, and the open hands. Now because he's locked down, he of course has his iconic hook, and they give you two of them. Give you one for the right and one for the left. Just mirror images of each other. So you can give them dual hook hands if you like. And now all the hands and these hooks just attach via the ball joints in the wrist. Where's that other? We'll use this one. Nice and securely. Now there are also a pair of microfiber cloths included with this figure. Now these puzzled me at first. You sometimes get these with a figure that has a lot of glossy surfaces for the sake of removing fingerprints. But this lockdown isn't glossy at all. Now, something else did occur to me a little bit too late in my case. I think these are actually intended to protect your fingers from the spikes. Uh, most notably with these chain pieces. Now, they're not too dangerous as is. Uh, just touch them, but the real problem arises when you try to attach and detach these. You need to apply a fair bit of force to get them in place, and when that happens, and you're applying force along this chain, these little points act like a serrated knife edge. And they will cut you, I find out the hard way. So what I think you're supposed to do is hold the chain via the cloth, and then use the... Uh, Socket end, that will just attach to the wrist, and then now the hooks or hands will fit uh, on the ball joint end. I imagine it's intended for the hook. And give them some kind of uh, swinging chain weapon. Now, they give you a couple of other chain pieces that the straight one I have equipped there, and two of slightly different curvature. You can chain these together, that's why they give you two cloths, so you can hold uh, both chains when you're attaching them without uh, scratching your fingers. Now, yeah, you do have to apply a fair bit of force, like especially with the chains together, it can be quite hard to get those in and out. Uh, so I would recommend you use those cloths, it makes it a lot easier. A lot less painful. He also has a sword, as he is of course an iron samurai, and a sheath. Slots in like that, and there is a port on his back that that will go into. And you can hold the sword in either of the gripping hands. Final accessory is actually this kind of weird looking piece. That is a hat. There is a tab in the underneath that uh, will line up with a slot on top of his head. And it's not a great connection, but... Uh, yeah, I imagine that's supposed to be one of those straw hats, wide brim straw hats you sometimes see. If you don't like it, you can just store it on the sheath. On the back like that. Which is probably what I'm going to do with it for the most part. For some size comparisons, 
Here are a couple of the other Iron Samurai figs. There's Bludgeon and Drift. There he is with a couple of others he appeared with in IDW. We've got Iron Factory Die Atlas and Deadlock. And you can see there, he is quite tall for an Iron Factory figure. Uh, Die Atlas is one of their bigger figures, and Lockdown is, I think, a little bit taller if we go by the top of the head. Uh, but yeah, he is pretty tall, especially next to one of those uh, sort of standard car bots. There he is with some Hasbro figures. We've got Core Class Kingdom Vertebrae and Deluxe Class Paleotrex. And that's just so you can see, he is right bang in the middle of that kind of deluxe and core class size range. That's him with the usuals, Iron Factory Runabout and the Lego Stormtrooper. And there he is with a couple of other lockdowns. They've got the animated version and the Revenge of the Fallen version. Now, he is quite similar to the animated version in some aspects, like the way he transforms, the proportions. Probably wasn't the best idea to on Iron Factory's part. IDW based their version of this toy, as far as I know. Uh, so, I think Iron Factory would have been better uh, doing something similar. Going with that uh, for the transformation would have avoided the awkward proportions uh, in the legs, especially. To convert it into alt mode, first thing you want to do, remove this stuff from the back, set it to the side for now. Then I'm going to raise the arms above his head, use the butterfly hinges to position those back out of the way. Rotate the biceps so that this little uh, peg on each arm is facing out the way. And then there is a tab on one of the shoulder pads that will let you secure those together. Now, this little waist piece needs to rotate 180 degrees independently of everything else, so you need to use both, uh, both waist joints to flip that around. Then, bend the upper torso back out of the way, flip the chest piece down on its hinge, that will tab into the back of the uh, waist piece, like so. You want to then rotate the feet 180 degrees each, close them up, then the legs will fold up beside everything else, and there are some ports here and here, those will tab into there on the uh, shoulders, and here at the elbows, respectively. Just making sure you've got everything lined up. See him on the other side. Okay, then you want to use the elbow and the wrist hinges to maneuver the hook into a position where this little tab lines up with this slot and everything sits flush at the bottom of the car. And then it's quite hard to get these just lined up on their own. Uh, the hand, there's no real way to tell how it's lined up other than lining it up with the hook arm. So you just want to fold that in any old way that gets it out of the, out of the road. No. Yes, the bonnet needs to flip down in here. Then this roof will unfold. Very nice and flat. And you want to collapse that down over everything. Nice and flush. And yeah, adjust those skull pieces however you like. Then. This hat piece, final thing, we're going to remove it from the sheath. And this has a hole on each side which allows it to secure in between the feet. So we're just going to peg it in there. Squish everything together, make sure it's all lined up nicely. And that's that. And there is the alt mode. Like most of Lockdown's incarnations, it is some kind of fictional muscle car. And I mean, just look at this thing. 
That is one mean machine. The twin only skulls in the front bumper there, and all those spikes, it is just so over the top. It is perfect for lockdown. You can store the weapon by tapping the sheath in, this little slot at the back. Just sits on top like that. And yeah, this is a solid design. Uh, well put together, no visible ro robot mode extras, and uh, I guess technically you could count the uh, hat pieces parts forming, but I'm not going to deduct points for that. One thing I do think is missing from this mode, he doesn't have that exposed hot rod engine that the animated and IDW versions have. Not really sure why they decided against that. I mean, seems like it would have been easy enough to have something that tabs in there, and then also to the robot mode arms, but that is a fairly minor nitpick. Paint is pretty minimal in this mode again, but works well enough. Some areas like on that we hinge, kind of just rubs off due to the friction. Would have been better not painting the sides there. For some alt mode size comparisons, here he is with Iron Factory Deadlock and Drift. That's him with Run Amok, Vertebrake, and the Stormtrooper. And as you can see there, he really does compress down in uh, in car mode. About the same size as just a standard car bot. And that is him with the animated and Revenge of the Fallen versions of Lockdown. So that is Iron Factory IFEX 53 Oni Vajra. Final thoughts on this figure? It's very high quality, well put together. I had no quality control issues with mine. It has a lot of character uh, from that exaggerated design and then with the range of articulation and the accessories they give you, he is really dynamic, really fun to pose. Now, on the other hand, it is really hard to ignore those robot mode proportions. Now, you can see there, I have him posed up. Uh, it's a little bit less noticeable, but yeah, the fact that it shares a lot of engineering similarities with the original animated toy works for it in alt mode. The alt mode is very good, but that works against it in robot mode. Uh, yeah. Another thing to consider, my fingers are sore. And seriously, uh, I, th I say it's mostly down to my, my status as an idiot, but uh, I'm not thinking before messing with him. But yeah, a lot of those wounds I got came from trying to separate the chain pieces with my bare fingers. He is uncomfortable to handle. Uh, you do risk giving yourself the equivalent of a small paper cut if you're not careful. Overall, I would recommend him if you're a fan of the character. If you're not, if you're not particularly, you're particularly attached to Lockdown, it's fair enough to give him a miss. You're not missing anything revolutionary with this toy, and it's understandable uh, for the proportions to put you off. But yeah, that's about all I've got to say about him. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.